And let us now uh, move, dear colleagues, to our next point on uh, our agenda, uh, which is uh, the number 18 point, the debate on the priorities of Portugal's presidency of the Council of the European Union. We have uh, the privilege and the honor to have with us Ana Paula Zacarias, the Secretary of State for European Affairs of the Portuguese Republic. Dear uh, Secretary of State, dear Ana Zacarias, uh, welcome to our plenary session. The Portuguese Presidency of the Council of the European Union comes uh, at a time of great importance. The pandemic continues to take lives place pressure on public services and harm local jobs and economies. EU, national, regional and local authorities are being tested every day. We are asked to find quick and effective solutions to protect our communities and build resilience. So during your presidency, we must guarantee the effective implementation of the EU budget. We must deliver an ambitious recovery plan that concretely addresses people's needs. It's essential, I'm sure you would agree, that the EU recovery promotes social inclusion and territorial cohesion. It must drive the green revolution and accelerate the digital transition of our communities. Your presidency is also called upon to work on creating a European health union that supports and complements the efforts of national, regional, and local authorities. Together, we must significantly strengthen our capacity so it is able to respond to public health crises and produce and distribute safe vaccines in Europe and beyond. We are following the difficult situation in Portugal and we welcome the solidarity expressed by the Member States and the EU. Vaccination must take place simultaneously through reinforced cooperation between all levels of governance in all member states, regions, cities and villages. The vaccine must remain a universal good, both public and freely available to everyone. I'm also convinced that your presidency will help launch the Conference on the Future of Europe. We count on you to bring a strong regional and local dimension to this process that needs to modernize the functioning of democracy and bring the EU closer to its people. Dear Secretary of State, we can achieve these objectives only by working together. I'm confident that the Portuguese Presidency and our committee will be close partners in the coming months. Your presence today is a strong signal in this direction in this direction, and the fact that our first Vice President is Portuguese, Mr. Vasco Cordeiro, is also a good sign of this good collaboration that we can have during your Presidency. In our May plenary session, we will welcome Prime Minister Costa, followed by our input to the Social Summit in Porto. Also. Our committee's next external meeting of the Bureau will take place in the Azores, most probably, and depending on the COVID-19 situation. Moreover, our committee will support members of our Portuguese delegation to organize local dialogues with citizens and will also adopt a couple of opinions on your request. I'm sure that on this good basis we will be able to build a solid and effective partnership to help the European Union and the Portuguese region, cities and villages to overcome this immense crisis and build resilience. Thank you very much. The floor is yours.
Visual Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome again. Finally. <laughs> <It was awful. laughs> thank you very much, uh, dear President. Um, and uh, thank you very much uh, for your introductory uh, words that were really, really important and relevant. Um, a, uh, I would like also uh, to greet uh, our Vice President and dear colleague uh, Vasco Cordeiro, distinguished uh, members of the European Committee of the Regions, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, greetings uh, to all of you uh, from from Lisbon, and uh, thank you, thank you for the for all the solidarity that uh, you all have been showing to the current situation in Portugal. I'm sure that together we will overcome. And uh, thanks God, the numbers uh, in terms of the uh, pandemic are uh, getting better, but the situation is still uh, difficult uh, here. So. First of all, let me thank you all for uh, this uh, possibility for discussing and uh, having an interaction with you on the priorities and main challenges of the Portuguese presidency of, of the Council during the, this uh, next uh, months. Um, local and regional authorities represent uh, in the EU by the European Committee of the, the Regions are at the core of the European democracy and represent the voices of our citizens. And Portugal has always acknowledged uh, the importance of the role fulfilled by the Committee of Regions in a, as a representative body for local and regional governments in the EU decision-making process, which reinforces the democratic legitimacy of the EU policies. And the pandemic has shown that uh, uh, local and regional leaders are driving forces uh, of local communities and play a key role in response to the crisis. To overcome the crisis, we have to be able to be more sustainable, more innovative. We need to, to fulfill more social cohesion and territorial cohesion, and we need to become closer to our citizens. Our proximity to citizens and your understanding of the reality on the ground in all member states are vitally important to ensure that Europe gets through these challenging times in a spirit of solidarity, leaving no one behind. This is the spirit in which I am here today also with you to discuss uh, all the elements of the Portuguese presidency. This is also the spirit uh, in which the Prime Minister will address the plenary of the Committee for Regions on the 5th of May. And, uh, and this is the spirit that brings us together as partners, as the President has just said, during the next uh, uh, couple of months. And um, it's also in this spirit uh, that we will certainly go to the Azores and, and participate also in, in the um, uh, meetings and the conferences that our friends from the Azores regions are organizing. It is fundamental to have this directed link with the citizens uh, and promote this dialogue. Citizens and regions play a key role in implementing nationwide measures and will certainly be very, very relevant when it comes to reforms and uh, pushing investment uh, in the, uh, particularly those that will be included in the upcoming uh, national recovery plans. So now looking into uh, the priorities of the Portuguese uh, presidency and the challenges, our president has just said uh, that indeed we take over this uh, uh, presidency of the council at a moment that uh, it's a very challenging one. Uh, and we need to put in motion, to put on the ground the decisions that have been taken by the German presidency. There were some historic decisions, be it on Brexit, be it on the economic uh, recovery and the financial instruments, being uh, at the need to work together to implement the vaccination processes. So now it's time to act. And this is why we have chosen the motto of our presidency as time to deliver a fair, green and digital recovery. And we will work under three overarching goals. First, to ensure Europe's economic recovery that is anchored and boosted by the green and digital transitions 
to strengthen the European pillar of social rights as a way to deliver those transitions in a fair and inclusive way. Third, to strengthen the strategic autonomy of Europe while keeping it open to the world. And we have established uh, the priorities according to three main, uh, to five main uh, areas of action. First, build a more resilient Europe. When we talk to building a more resilient Europe, we are talking about uh, the need to work on public health. First of all, we need to save lives. We need to ensure a coordinated work on tests, on vaccination, uh, production and delivery of vaccines. We need to work together to ensure the free movement of people in the EU and to uh, take care also of our borders. Uh, and at the same time, we need to work on international cooperation in terms of the vaccination. Secondly, when we talk about a more resilient Europe, of course, we need to work on uh, the priority that is also at the center of our work. The pandemic has been a disruptive factor in our economy and in our society. So, and we still don't know the, the dimension of the consequences. We know that it will be severe, long lasting, so we need to act quickly. We took unprecedented action to fight the economic crisis, both in quantitative and qualitative terms. In fact, we almost doubled the financial capacity of the EU by adding the next generation program to the multi-annual financial uh, framework. So we now need to be able to put this on the ground and to make sure that the money of this innovative uh, financial instruments gets to our citizens, gets to our regions, get to our uh, to to the enterprises uh, as soon as possible. And we are doing our utmost to make sure that by June the national recovery plans are starting all over Europe. And uh, we also need to make sure that the uh, multi-annual financial framework is also uh, working uh, as soon as possible. So we are pushing for uh, the uh, swift approval of all the regulations uh, so that we have uh, the cohesion programs, the uh, um, financial uh, instruments that are relevant, even those that are centralized, that can be used also uh, by uh, the regions and by uh, our citizens are fundamental, like or Horizon Europe that has been just uh, um, uh, launched uh, a couple of days ago. Finally, when we talk about resilience in Europe, we also talk about values. Uh, we need to make sure that our democracy is strong, that uh, we respect the rule of law, that the rule of law continues to become and continues to be a central pillar of all our work. And at the same time, we need to increase the dialogue with the citizens. And this is why we will do our utmost to start the conference on the future of Europe. Uh, Prime Minister Costa has been uh, involved in this. Uh, and uh, and we hope that soon we will be able to start the discussions with the European Parliament to start the conference, of course, involving also the Committee of Regions, because it is through the national parliaments, it is through our mayors, through the presidents of our regions, that we can reach the citizens uh, as much as, as possible to engage on the debate on the European policies and how to get uh, out of the current crisis. And this takes me to the second uh, element. To get out of the crisis, we need to get out of it with a long-term vision, and we need to work on more sustainability and more innovation. So here, it is very important that we ensure that this twin transition, digital and climate, uh, is uh, well anchored in the ground and leaves no one behind. So we need to work on the European Green Deal, in particular the European climate law and all the legislation that it entails. Uh, it is important that we also work on adaptation on the ground. This is very important also for mayors and for uh, the regions. We need to work on energy, on transport, uh, using the year of railway in 2021 as a reminder of what we need to do also in this field. We need to promote a sustainable uh, sustainability in the rural world and we need to promote 
the blue economy. And in this sense, I really uh, want to thank you, the Committee of Regions, uh, for its report that will produce on um, uh, the local uh, authorities and, and regional authorities uh, the way they can help us protect the marine, um, uh, the marine environment. Um, and we also need to continue working on the digital targets for 2030. We need to become, um, to develop our digital markets, our digital services, our digital economy. We need to work in developing uh, infrastructure and connectivity. And all these two uh, transitions, climate and digital, they have to be in the national recovery plans according to what has been decided in, in, in specific areas and with the right amount of investment. But here we go to the third priority. We cannot do this unless we have a strong cohesion in terms of social cohesion, in terms of territorial cohesion. So here comes uh, the other priority, the core priority of the Portuguese uh, presidency, which is the social domain. We believe that the European social model of market economy, it's our distinguished factor as economies and societies which are free, forward-looking, ensuring benefits from uh, for all and regardless of their social economic background where they grow up, what color they are, uh, what they do or whom they love. It is important that we keep this European social model, that we reinforce it, that we reinforce it with our public health policies, for instance. So um, we need this strong social Europe. And uh, this is the reason why we uh, are organizing uh, during uh, the Portuguese presidency a, a summit that uh, we follow the model that was used uh, in Gothenburg in 2017 when we established the European pillar for social rights. Now we need to put them on the ground. We need to, to have this set of 20 principles and implement them. So we are waiting and working also with the European Commission so that we can have this action plan on the implementation of the European pillar of social rights. And we will work with the Economic and Social Committee with the Committee of Regions, with the social partners, uh, with the civil society, with the European Parliament, with the member states to put this on the ground so that we finally have an action plan and we can all uh, work on this, on this, uh, on this domain uh, together. The summit will have two key moments. One moment on the 7th of May, uh, where we want to have all these partners discussing the European social agenda and the implementation of the European pillar of social rights. And then a second moment where we'll have uh, on the 8th in the morning, all the uh, heads of state and government that we hope that they will produce a declaration on the relevance of the European uh, pillar of social rights and its implementation on the ground. And this is very relevant and I want to thank you also for the involvement of the Council of, of the Committee of Regions uh, in, in producing also a report in this matter that we will discuss and that will be one of the main elements of our uh, conference. And finally, uh, I believe that uh, we need to have a coherent external agenda. We need to work together uh, to push for European interests and values. And this means that we need to work together on um, industrial policy, trade policy, competitiveness policy, and at the same time, keep Europe open to the world. And we need to reinforce multilateralism. We need to work more uh, with the United Nations. Uh, we need to work on with the um, uh, WHO, we need to work with the climate relevant organizations, we need to work with WTO on trade, so we need to push for more multilateralism and at the same time reinforce our partnerships, partnership with Latin America, where we need to reinforce our connections and our trade uh, dimension, partnership with Africa where we also need to reinforce uh, investment, where we need to bring in more jobs uh, so that uh, we can have a stronger relation with a continent that is our neighbor. Uh, partnership with Asia, uh, 
there is uh, now uh, a new agreement on investment with China. We need also to work with India. India is uh, one of the biggest democracies in the world. We need to work with them also, particularly on the area of investment too. And we need to continue working with our closest allies, reinforce uh, uh, our transatlantic relations and uh, work with the United Kingdom, work with with the United States, with the new administration, so that we can uh, really uh, take together these global challenges, be it the response to COVID-19, being the response to climate change, be it the need to uh, ensure digital uh, transformation. So uh, in this regard, we also need to look to our neighbors uh, on the east, on the south, we will promote uh, particularly uh, the development in a more structured way with our southern neighbors, uh, without forgetting uh, that we will also need to work with our friends from the Eastern Partnership. Uh, and, uh, and this is it. It's a long agenda. It's a lot of work. Our symbol is a sun that is uh, right behind me here. It's a... Uh, a little sun that is formed by the 27 stars of the European Union. If we could look at each of these stars, it will be formed by a myriad of stars that are their regions, that are their mayors, that are the citizens that uh, make all the Union together. We need to work together. Only this way we'll be able to get out of the current crisis and to grow in a more sustainable, in a better and fair and more justice society. We need to use this immense tragedy that we are passing, that we're living through, uh, to uh, really become a fair, sustainable, innovative society. And now, as we say, it's time to deliver. So thank you very much uh, for this opportunity, and I look forward for your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Secretary. I think uh, that uh, your remarks uh, gave us a very clear vision, uh, a very clear understanding of the vision of the Portuguese presidency. Uh, and uh, we're really, really looking forward in work, working with you uh, in these exact uh, uh, aspects that you have presented to us today. So I would like to open the floor now for our colleagues, our members uh, from the regions and cities all across Europe to ask their questions and make their comments to uh, Secretary Zakarias. And I will start with Mark Speich from the EPP. Sehr geehrter Herr Präsident, vielen Dank. Und sehr geehrte Frau Staatssekretärin Zakarias, ganz herzlichen Dank für Ihre Ausführungen die mich sehr optimistisch stimmen. Optimistisch, weil sie den Ehrgeiz vermittelt haben, tatsächlich Ergebnisse zu liefern. Mich stimmt aber auch die portugiesische Sonne, Sonne optimistisch, wenn ich in den grauen deutschen Winterhimmel schaue. Insofern freue ich mich, dass Sie mit so viel Ambition an diese Ratspräsidentschaft gehen. Ich würde gerne drei Punkte ganz kurz ansprechen. Das eine ist die Konferenz zur Zukunft Europas. Sie haben sie auch erwähnt. Es ist gut, dass es jetzt endlich losgehen soll, dass die Führungsfrage hoffentlich geklärt ist, wie wir hören, und dass wir dann am 9. Mai mit einem Jahr Verspätung beginnen können. Ich bin Ihnen sehr dankbar dafür, dass Sie deutlich gemacht haben, dass die Regionen und Kommunen bei dieser Konferenz eine Rolle spielen müssen. Und ich glaube auch, dass wir das Thema der regionalen, der kommunalen Mitwirkung im europäischen Entscheidungsprozess zu einem Thema dieser Konferenz machen müssen. Zweitens würde ich gern das Asyl- und Migrationspaket ansprechen. Hier sind es wieder die Regionen und Kommunen, die am stärksten betroffen sind. Sie erwarten eine Lösung und wir müssen diese Lösung bringen. Aber wir müssen auch hier die Perspektive der Kommunen und Regionen mit einbeziehen. Und das ist meine Bitte, diese Perspektive bei dem Paket zu berücksichtigen. Und als dritten Punkt möchte ich das Handels- und Kooperationsabkommen mit dem Vereinigten Königreich ansprechen. Wir freuen uns, dass es dieses Abkommen jetzt gibt. Aber auch hier ist es so, dass die weitere Ausgestaltung ganz wesentlich die Kommunen und Regionen betreffen wird. Und deswegen wünschen wir uns, in den Governance-Strukturen, die hier vorgesehen sind, vertreten zu werden. 
und wir bitten um Ihre Unterstützung. Ich danke auch dem Präsidenten, dass er sich dafür eingesetzt hat, denn wir glauben, dass wir hier ein Mitspracherecht haben sollten. Ähm, der Anpassungsfonds, der vorgesehen ist, die Anpassungsreserve, ist aus unserer Sicht auch zu klein. Sie ist nämlich nicht nur auf Fragen der Fischerei beschränkt, so wichtig diese sind, sondern sie betreffen viele Regionen. Und auch hier brauchen wir mehr Mittel. Auch das wäre unsere Bitte, uns in dieser Frage zu unterstützen. Ganz herzlichen Dank und alles Gute für die portugiesische Ratspräsidentschaft. Danke schön, Marc. The floor now to Marco Marcula from the EPP. Thank you, thank you, Mr. President, uh, dear Ana Paula Zacharias. Uh, we, the EPP, we stress the European value base integrated to reaching the SDG targets by 2030. We want to keep that strong all the time in our concrete work. The CR by our rapporteur, the mayor of Praga, Ricardo Ria, he will prepare an opinion on this. So we will talk about this issue during your presidency, definitely. And I like very much uh, how you stress the importance of delivery. Europe needs to accelerate the recovery and everywhere citizens and industry need growth. But I stress what, not whatever growth, it needs to be sustainable. Uh, and, and the uh, recovery funds should be in use as fast as possible. Cities and uh, city-driven regions uh, we are uh, ready to move to action. And as we heard yesterday in the uh, plenary Commissioner Ferreira with our debate with the Commissioner Ferreira, there are still many obstacles. Unfortunately, governments of uh, several member states are too slow. They are blocking the action. Portuguese presidency can re really influence much on this. I stress the importance of integrating uh, green and digital, and as you said, the digital and climate, they go hand in hand. The new EU instruments are well in the process, and here I especially mean European digital innovation hubs and European research area hubs. These two are of particular importance for regions, and in this especially now, delivery is the key. I hope you in Portugal will highlight the innovativeness in real life practice when you organize especially with respect to these two instruments the digital days in march and the digital assembly in june thank you very much let's work together thank you very much president marcula the floor now to concepcion andreu rodriguez from the pes group gracias presidente Buenos días a todos y a todas. Eh, estimada Secretaria de Estado de Asuntos Europeos, muchas gracias por estar hoy aquí presentando las prioridades de su presidencia. Sus ambiciones están a la altura de los retos que se, a los que se enfrenta la Unión Europea, además de las prioridades incluidas en el programa de la actual Comisión Europea, como son la digitalización y el, de los pactos verde y social. El coronavirus nos ha puesto frente a una crisis con enormes implicaciones sanitarias económicas y también sociales. El pasado mes de diciembre aprobamos el presupuesto plurianual y el fondo de recuperación. Ahora tenemos que asegurarnos de que esa inversión inédita sirva para las regiones y municipios más afectados por las consecuencias de la enfermedad, para los sectores productivos que han sufrido la pandemia con más rigor y, sobre todo, para los ciudadanos que más están sufriendo las consecuencias de todo ello. Contamos con la presidencia portuguesa para garantizar que nadie se quede atrás y contamos también con los 27 soles de vuestro sol. Como dijo el vicepresidente Franz Timmermans durante la semana de la vivienda organizada por nuestro grupo político la semana pasada, dijo, estamos ante la tormenta perfecta para cambiar la situación. Sobre la emergencia climática tenemos que garantizar que las inversiones respondan a los objetivos del Pacto Verde. La política agrícola común y la política de cohesión tendrán que apoyar esta transformación ecológica. Ocuparnos de lo urgente que es superar la pandemia no puede jamás ser una excusa para dejar de avanzar en lo importante. La clave del futuro de la Unión está ahora en convertir esta crisis en una oportunidad para acelerar la transformación de nuestros territorios. Por tanto, 
Les deseamos mucho éxito, sus aciertos serán en beneficio de todos y sepan que pueden contar con nosotros para ayudarles. Thank you very much. The floor now to Elio Di Rupo from the PES. Prime Minister, the floor is yours. Est-ce que vous m'entendez Oui, oui. Ah, ah voilà, merci. Euh, merci, M. le Président, et merci, Madame la Secrétaire d'État. Euh, je félicite la présidence portugaise pour sa volonté de replacer la dimension sociale au cœur des priorités européennes. Et en pleine pandémie, il est crucial d'envoyer aux entreprises et aux citoyens un message d'espoir C'est ce que fait la présidence portugaise, je dis simplement bravo. On doit rétablir la confiance entre les dirigeants européens et les citoyens. À cet égard, le sommet de Porto peut forcer la mise en œuvre concrète du pilier social européen, pilier social qui doit être pris en compte dans la relance européenne. La création d'une Union européenne de la santé, en particulier, sera un élément important dans la restauration de la confiance des citoyens. Une Union européenne de la santé capable de se doter de stocks stratégiques et de faire produire en Europe les biens médicaux nécessaires. Là, mes chers collègues, au terme de la pandémie épouvantable que nous vivons, l'Union européenne a besoin d'une réforme profonde de sa gouvernance économique. J'ai présenté en décembre un avis du Comité européen des régions avec des propositions concrètes sur cette réforme. Cette réforme de la gouvernance économique doit aller de pair avec une participation renforcée des collectivités locales et régionales, notamment dans le cadre du semestre européen. Et cette participation renforcée conférerait une plus grande légitimité à la gouvernance européenne. Et cette participation renforcée des régions fortifiera la cohésion de l'Union européenne et augmentera sa crédibilité auprès des citoyens. Je compte vraiment beaucoup sur la présidence portugaise pour y parvenir et je souhaite bon vent à Antonio Costa et à toute son équipe. Merci infiniment. Thank you, Prime Minister. The floor now to Ulrika Landergren from Renew Europe. Tack, herr ordförande, och god morgon. Och trevligt att få prata med statssekreterare Anna Paula Zacharias. Vi från Renewgruppen vill först skicka en varm hälsning till Portugal som vi vet att ni har en väldigt tuff och ansträngd situation när det gäller covid-pandemin. Vi vet att ni har fått både hjälp från Tyskland och Österrike och det är ju när vi är i dessa svårigheter där vi behöver varandra mest som vi också ser vikten av att jobba tillsammans i Europa. Det är därför väldigt roligt att också läsa vad det portugisiska ordförandeskapet lyfter för frågor. Återhämtning av pandemin, ja det är ju en självklarhet att vi måste få igång eh, Europa. Men eh, jag vill lyfta två frågor framförallt och det är att vi ska kunna leverera och skapa resultat inom den gröna bilen och digital transformation. Eh, och den andra, den sociala pelaren för att också åstadkomma inkluderande och klimatomställning och för att lyckas med den digitala omställningen och att Europa ska vara öppen mot omvärlden. När det gäller den digitala transformationen måste vi prata om både hårda och mjuka värden. Tekniken måste finnas först på plats. Vi har alla i Europa eh, ska ha tillgång till en bra internetanslutning och bredband. Men vi ser i pandemins spår tydliga skillnader. Om jag tar min egen kommun så har vi inte haft stora problem med att till exempel våra gymnasieungdomar eller högstadieelever har haft tillgång till bredband och datorer och iPods. De har kunnat fullfölja skolan under hela pandemin och varit uppkopplade med alla sina lärare 
och haft undervisning på distans. Så här vet jag att det verkligen inte ser ut i hela Europa. Och det är helt oacceptabelt att våra ungdomar får så olika förutsättningar för undervis- och tillgång till undervisning. Ett annat exempel är ju våra mest sårbara, våra äldre. Att vi ser med tillgång till bredband och digital teknik så har man kunnat haft kontakt med sina läkare via nätet. Man har kunnat beställa matvaror, andra varor. Man har kunnat leva där vi inte har kunnat träffas har vi kunnat träffas digitalt i politiken, i jobbet men också de sociala kontakterna. Det är väldigt viktigt att den digitala tekniken finns på plats och att det inte blir ett stort gap i den digitala kompetensen. Det här lyfter ni väldigt väl i det portugisiska ordförandeskapet och ni fokuserar också på den sociala pelaren vilket jag tycker är fantastiskt roligt eftersom det är min grannstad Göteborg där det här startade. Och det är viktigt att vi då också ser utvecklingen med digital teknik blir också den gröna dealen möjlig. Minska resandet för minskade utsläpp. Eh, nya verksamheter som kan finnas i eh, avfolkningsbygder. Eh, men det kräver ju att det faktiskt finns eh, bredband där. Eh, så eh, jag ser fram emot att följa er och jag tycker att er rubrik på ert arbete, tid för att leverera, ja det är faktiskt det som krävs av oss i Europa nu. Så tack eh, för ert engagemang och jag ser fram emot leveransen. Thank you very much, uh, Ulrika. Bratislav Ortil, please, from the ECR Group. Thank you very much, Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President. We know that the President of Portugal has been a long time of the non-presidential crisis and there are a lot of difficult challenges in the past. The topic that the President should be most important to put the pressure on the health of the European Union. Na naszych oczach odbywa się światowy wyścig szczepień. Patrząc na liczbę zaszczepionych, Unia Europejska no, w tyle pozostaje za Izraelem, Wielką Brytanią czy Islandią. Komisja Europejska wpłaciła naprawdę potężne środki na badania związane z szczepionkami, a dzisiaj widzimy, że koncerny wysyłają te szczepionki poza Unię. Obecna sytuacja jest nie za do akceptowania, musimy ją zmienić, trzeba wprowadzić nowe rozwiązania, które dotyczyłyby kontroli eksportu i zmuszały firmy farmaceutyczne do dostarczania umówionych dawek szczepionek. Drugim priorytetem prezydencji powinno być ożywienie gospodarcze. Czas, jaki jest to kwestia konieczności oddziaływania silnego unijnego budżetu, bo takiej mamy, oraz funduszu odbudowy na zmiany gospodarcze. Ale trzeba tu zwrócić na uwagę na to, co nas niepokoi, czyli sztywność wydatkowania. Przede wszystkim 60% alokacji z funduszu no, jest przeznaczone na z góry określone cele. No, dziś nie wiemy, w jakim stopniu jest potrzeba interwencji, jeżeli chodzi o rozwój gospodarczy i w związku z tym ta elastyczność jest naprawdę potrzebna. Fundusz odbudowy miał być w założeniach naprawdę taki ekologiczny, szybki, łatwy i przyjemny. No jest trochę inaczej, musimy go zmienić. Trzecia sprawa to zmiana rozporządzenia, który, który dotyczy handlu emisjami. Emisje i ten system wymknął się spoza kontroli i to no, dosyć negatywnie odbywa się, odbija się na konkurencyjności naszego, naszej gospodarki europejskiej. Po czwarte, imigracja. Tu trzeba, należy wzmocnić tą walkę. Unia musi być wyposażona w instrumenty nacisku na państwa trzecie, które nie współpracują w dziedzinie imigracji z nami. Po piąte, chronię prawo do wypowiedzi. To jest całkowicie pominięte w priorytetach prezydencji europejskiej. Nie możemy pozwolić, aby wolność słowa była ograniczana przez gigantów technologicznych. To jest duży problem, duże zagrożenie dla demokracji i to może dotyczyć polityków no, także samorządowych. Walczmy o to, a prezydenci życzymy wiele sił i oczywiście będziemy ją wspierać. Wszystkiego najlepszego. Thank you very much.
The floor now to Elizabeth Nebreda Villa from the EA Group. Thank you, President. Bom dia, Senhora Secretaria. I would like to thank the Portuguese Presidency for being here today explaining their priorities. Of this, we very much welcome the focus on the development of the European pillar of social rights because a union that protects and cares for its citizens is the best firewall against the increasing threat of state nationalism and neo-fascism. Indeed, solidarity among the peoples of Europe and the protection of their social rights must be given priority, abandoning and when possible reversing the harmful austerity policies adopted in the past. We need more ambitious and efficient social policies to address the negative impacts that the pandemic has brought to societies already damaged by those austerity policies. This time, we must make sure that our way out of the current crisis leaves no one behind. And I mean it. It's not and must not be an empty slogan. Last week, for instance, the Spanish government passed a decree regulating the management of the recovery funds in Spain. Its main targets, the body of the administration and the companies, not a word on the people or their needs, not on the role of regional or local authorities, which know best the reality and the needs of their communities. This is why I call on the Portuguese presidency to involve regional and local governments in the design and implementation of its priorities, especially towards the upcoming Porto summit. There is a lot of work to do on social inclusion and the fight against poverty, but we can do it together. Minimum income schemes, the child guarantee, the green book on aging, homelessness, in work poverty, adequate minimum wages. In tackling these issues, the Portuguese presidency will find an ally in the Catalan government as we're already working in, in many of these areas and we are eager to contribute. I'll stop here. Just let me congratulate again the Portuguese presidency for having put the reinforcement of social Europe at the top of the EU agenda and to wish them success as regards the organization and outcomes of the social summit in which we regions, again, hope to participate and contribute. We are definitely ready for it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Joseph Frey from the Greens party, please. Sehr geehrte Frau Staatssekretärin, die Grüne Fraktion dankt Ihnen sehr, dass Sie heute für diesen Meinungsaustausch zur Verfügung stehen. Portugal hat die Ratspräsidentschaft in einer schwierigen Zeit übernommen. Wir haben eine außerordentliche Gesundheitskrise mit massiven Auswirkungen auf den Menschen und die Wirtschaft. Die Bewältigung der Pandemiefolgen wird viel Energie und Geld kosten. Es ist daher, wie es Ihr Motto der Ratspräsidentschaft richtig sagt, Zeit zu handeln, um einen fairen, grünen und digitalen Aufschwung zu erreichen. Dazu zwei Anmerkungen. Erstens, der Aufschwung muss fair sein. Sie haben dieses Ziel als eine Ihrer Prioritäten aufgenommen. Es muss unser gemeinsames Anliegen sein, beim Übergang zu einer grünen und digitalen Wirtschaft und Gesellschaft niemanden zurückzulassen. Der gesellschaftliche Zusammenhalt zeichnet die europäische Lebens- und Wertegemeinschaft aus. Das kann nur dann so bleiben, wenn wir auch auf dem Weg aus der Krise die Schwachen und Benachteiligten mitnehmen. Ich wünsche, wünsche mir, dass der Sozialgipfel im Mai in Porto ein starkes Zeichen für ein soziales Europa der Solidarität setzt. Und zweitens, der Aufschwung muss auch nachhaltig sein. Der, die Corona-Krise bietet die unerwartete Chance einer schnellen Neujustierung der Wirtschaft hin zu mehr Nachhaltigkeit, auch bei den Handelsabkommen. Diese Chance gilt es jetzt zu ergreifen und dazu zählt auch, dass die Wiederaufbaugelder der europäischen, nationalen und regionalen Ebenen sinnvoll, sprich nachhaltig ausgegeben werden. Vor allem der Kampf gegen den Klimawandel muss absolute Priorität haben. Es ist zwingend erforderlich, dass die EU ihre Führungsrolle in Sachen Klimaschutz weiterhin ernst nimmt und hier alle einzelnen Mitgliedstaaten auch ambitionierter vorangehen. Dazu gehört für mich auch ein höheres CO2-Zwischenziel für 2030 als der Kommissionsvorschlag. Ich bitte die portugiesische Ratspräsidentschaft eindringlich, sich in den Verhandlungen auf EU-Ebene für ein höheres Zwischenziel einzusetzen. Mindestens 60 Prozent, besser 65 Prozent, um die Pariser Klimaschutzziele zu erreichen. Vielen Dank für Ihre Thank you very much. And uh, the floor now to our first Vice President, uh, Vasco Cordeiro. Uh, 
Good morning para everybody. Um, cara Secretária de Estado, Ana Paula Zacarias, em primeiro lugar, uma saudação uh, para si e para todos aqueles que estão envolvidos na preparação e na concretização da presidência uh, portuguesa da União Europeia. E também uma saudação naturalmente especial ao Primeiro-Ministro António Costa por ser, no fundo, uh, dar corpo à liderança desta, uh, desta presidência. Eu gostaria de aproveitar este tempo para salientar uh, três aspectos que me parecem fundamentais no programa da presidência portuguesa e que dizem muito, não apenas ao Comitê das Regiões, mas que dizem muito também, creio, aos poderes locais e regionais, às entidades locais e regionais de toda a União Europeia. A primeira ideia tem a ver com o pilar social, a aposta que a presidência portuguesa faz. Nós não nos podemos esquecer que é um dos objetivos fundamentais da União Europeia e, por isso, não é apenas uma questão de visão ou de ambição, é uma obrigação da União Europeia concretizar este pilar social. Sim, nós precisamos de um, nós precisamos de um, de um mercado interno, mas a União Europeia precisa de mostrar a mesma ambição quando se trata de alcançar o progresso social. A segunda ideia que eu gostaria de salientar tem a ver com a referência muito positiva e concreta que o programa faz quanto ao, à ênfase colocada nos princípios da subsidiariedade e na relevância da governação multilevel ou multinível um, no âmbito da União, da União Europeia. Eu acho que este aspecto é fundamental e, sobretudo, porque destacar o papel e a importância da subsidiariedade e da governação a vários níveis na forma como a Europa funciona não é apenas, em primeiro lugar e acima de tudo, uma questão que diga respeito às autoridades regionais e locais. Trata-se, desde logo, de saber que tipo de União Europeia é que nós queremos o que nos leva à Conferência sobre o Futuro da Europa e ao desejo de ter uma conferência forte e, sobretudo, da qual saiam resultados que não defraudem as expectativas dos cidadãos, que não sejam apenas uma declaração. E, por último, salientar também a importância que a Presidência dá à questão das ultraperiferias, quer como parte integrante da Europa, quer como relevantes, aliás, para a projeção do projeto europeu. Muito obrigado. Thank you, Vasco. Um, I would like to give the floor now for one minute to some of our members. Uh, Jesus Camayo Aller, for one minute, please. Peter Kaiser, for one minute, please. Matteo Bianchi, for one minute, please. Grazie Presidente, caro Segretario di Stato, noto con piacere che la Presidenza portoghese punta molto sulla conferenza sul futuro dell'Europa. A mio parere è fondamentale che questa conferenza porti alla revisione dei trattati per fondare le basi di una nuova Europa. In questa revisione dovrà rientrare una presa di coscienza, ovvero che l'Europa non può esistere senza i suoi enti locali e regionali. Per questo reputo necessario rivedere il ruolo istituzionale del Comitato delle Regioni, che va dotato di un maggiore peso nel processo decisionale europeo. La pandemia che stiamo vivendo da più di un anno ha rivoluzionato le nostre vite. 
Credo che sia necessaria una inversione di rotta a livello europeo ed è cruciale che l'azione delle istituzioni poggi le basi sui valori della tradizione come faro e caposaldo per i popoli europei frastornati dalla pandemia. Concludo, i nostri cittadini non vogliono una guida ideologica ma piuttosto una leadership pragmatica da parte dell'Unione Europea e c'è bisogno di un impulso nell'attività europea nei vari scenari internazionali. Reputo che il posizionamento europeo deve tornare ad essere facilmente riconoscibile e intransigente sul non voler compromettere i nostri valori di riferimento. Grazie. Thank you very much. Satu Hapanen for one minute. Puheenjohtaja, arvoisa valtiosihteeri, oli toivoa antavaa nähdä innostuksenne ja sitoutumisenne yhteisten tavoitteiden edistämisessä maanne puheenjohtajuuden alkaessa. Vihreän ryhmän toisena puheenjohtajana toivotan teille menestystä työssänne. Kansallisia elpymissuunnitelmia hyväksyttäessä on tärkeää varmistaa, että niihin on sisällytetty sosiaaliset oikeudet ja vaadittavat ilmastotoimet. Alueiden komitea tuo osaamisensa Portugalin puheenjohtajakauteen kahden siltä pyydetyn lausunnon muodossa. Olemme iloisia, että jäsenemme Emma Nureen on valittu meriympäristön suojelua koskevan lausunnon raportööriksi. Merillä on, kuten Portugali tietää, valtava merkitys luonnon monimuotoisuudelle ja ravintoketjujen varmistajana. Meillä on myös odotuksia sosiaalisten oikeuksien etenemisille Euroopassa. Euroopan alle 25-vuotiaat kansalaiset muodostuvat neljäsosan Euroopan väestöstä. On tärkeää pitää huolta heidän hyvinvoinnistaan. Toivomme, että Euroopan tulevaisuuskonferenssi saadaan käynnistettyä. Onnea Portugalille kunnianhimoisten tavoitteiden saavuttamisessa. Kiitos. Thank you very much. Peter Kaiser, please, the floor for one minute. Tom Diasch, Signora Secretaria de Estado, Kärnten begrüßt ausdrücklich das Programm der portugiesischen Ratspräsidentschaft, das unter dem sehr motivierenden und aktiven Motto Zeit zu liefern für einen fairen, umweltfreundlichen und digitalen Wiederaufbau steht. Der Vorsitz setzt hervorragende Schwerpunkte in diesen Krisenzeiten, nämlich den Green Deal, den europäischen Wiederaufbau mit Hilfe von Next Generation EU, sowie die so bedeutsame europäische Säule für soziale Rechte, ohne die ein fairer und inklusiver grüner und digitaler Wandel nicht stattfinden kann. Als Berichterstatter, Rapporteur zur vorgeschlagenen Richtlinie für faire, angemessene Mindestlöhne begrüße ich es besonders, dass der Vorsitz der Umsetzung der europäischen Säule sozialer Rechte im Leben der Bürger konkrete Bedeutung verleihen will. Angemessene Mindestlöhne sind ein Instrument zur Stärkung des sozialen Zusammenhalts, zur Verhinderung von Erwerbsarmut, zur Sicherstellung eines angemessenen Lebensunterhaltes für Arbeitnehmerinnen und Arbeitnehmer sowie zur Unterstützung der Gleichstellung der Geschlechter. Im Zuge des Wieders... Im Zuge des Wiederaufbaus wird die Aufbau- und Resilienzfazilität eine große Rolle spielen, weshalb der Fokus des Vorsitzes auf deren Umsetzung zu begrüßen ist. Wichtig ist jedoch zu betonen, dass für einen erfolgreichen Einsatz der Mittel aus der Fazilität sichergestellt werden muss, dass die lokalen und regionalen Gebietskörperschaften in die Erstellung der nationalen Aufbaupläne mit einbezogen werden. Thank you, Jesus Gamayo, please, for one minute. Muchas gracias, señor presidente. Muy obrigado, señora secretaria de Estado. Yo, como representante de Galicia, una región muy próxima a Portugal, me gustaría hacer referencia fundamentalmente a la cuestión de la demografía, a los desafíos demográficos. Estamos hablando del envejecimiento activo, pero también de la dispersión de la población, que deben ser elementos que informen todas las políticas europeas, que estén en el debate sobre el futuro de Europa, como hemos pedido varias regiones, para la atribución de fondos estructurales y de inversión. Las regiones y municipios tenemos mucho que decir en esto. Desde mi región hemos impulsado una ley de impulso demográfico, una ley nueva que nos permite avanzar en estas cuestiones, tanto en el ámbito sanitario, social y educativo. 
Decía la secretaria de Estado que vamos a reforzar en esta presidencia el pilar social. Estamos muy de acuerdo con ello, pero entendemos que esto no puede ser posible sin más cohesión, sin atender los desafíos demográficos, sin que los desafíos demográficos informen todas las políticas europeas para buscar, para lograr una Europa verde, digital, resiliente y más justa. Muchas gracias y mucha suerte a Portugal. Thank you very much. Piero Zanin, please. Buongiorno Presidente, un saluto anche al Sottosegretario di Stato portoghese. Tra i pilastri della politica messa in campo dalla direzione portoghese c'è la tutela dell'ecosistema marino. Io sono Presidente della Friuli Venezia Giulia, una regione a nord-est alla sommità del mare Adriatico e sicuramente l'economia blu, tutto quello che riguarderà la tutela dell'ecosistema marino sarà fondamentale non solo per la nostra regione ma anche per il partenariato che abbiamo attivato anche con la Galizia dell'amico Gamaio che ha parlato prima di me e che è finalizzata a individuare percorsi di pesca sostenibile di tutela del mare alla finalità anche di poter aumentare la capacità del mare di catturare CO2 e quindi dare anche una risposta sulla rigenerazione ambientale che è uno dei pilastri fondamentali della futura politica eh, eh, della comunità europea. Va anche detto che questo partenariato deve essere finalizzato all'aiuto dei paesi terzi e in questo c'è una forte attività eh, con la Libia per poter in qualche modo aiutare quei paesi. Grazie e buongiorno Mr. President. Thank you. The floor now to Guillaume Cross for one minute. Oui, merci, Monsieur le Président, Madame la Secrétaire d'État, chers collègues. Lors de la présentation des priorités de votre présidence, vous avez fait part de votre volonté de promouvoir l'Union européenne comme leader de l'action pour le climat. Si les écologistes ne peuvent que saluer cette ambition, nous ne pouvons que nous, nous alarmer de voir ressurgir l'accord de libre-échange entre l'Union européenne et le Mercosur. Cet accord ne fera notamment que promouvoir un modèle d'agriculture industrielle climaticide que nous ne voulons plus et qui est en totale contradiction avec le Green Deal. Dans une logique totalement aberrante, cet accord nous éloigne chaque jour un peu plus du modèle agroécologique qui doit être défendu et pour lequel j'ai rédigé un rapport d'initiative qui est en ce moment même mis au vote des membres du comité des régions. Un modèle donc respectueux des hommes et des femmes, des terres, de la biodiversité qui répond aux besoins alimentaires et augmente la résilience économique de nos exploitations. Je vous remercie. Thank you. Anne Karjalainen for one minute, please. Kiitoksia puheenjohtaja, arvoisa valtiosihteeri. Portugalin puheenjohtajakausi tulee erittäin vaikeeseen aikaan. Elämme keskellä terveyskriisiä ja jonain päivänä selätämme tämänkin kriisin, mutta tietysti sitten meillä paikallistason toimijoilla on myös eri, erittäin paljon haasteita ratkoa näitä erilaisia sosiaali, o, sosiaalisia ongelmia. Kriisithän yleensä kohtelevat ö, eri väestöryhmiä eri tavoin, erityisesti nyt sitten tällä kertaa nuoret ja, ja myöskin naiset ö, ja lapset, niin heihin on kohdistunut erittäin paljon ö, to, erilaisia tota, ongelmia ja, ja haasteita. Mutta meidän tulee olla kunnianhimoinen ja siksi arvoisa valtiosihteeri olin hyvin iloinen siitä, että puhuitte eurooppalaisesta sosiaalimallista, johon on, jonka niin kuin, pohjana on, ovat nämä vahvat eurooppalaiset arvot. Meidän tulee onnistua tässä sosiaalisen oikeuksien pilarin täytäntöönpanossa, koska vain silloin kansalaiset, eurooppalaiset kansalaiset voivat tuntea ja kokea, että, että he ovat osa Eurooppaa. Tällä, Tällä viikolla minut valittiin aluekomitean edustajana valmistelemaan lausuntoa sosiaalisten oikeuksien pilarin täytäntöönpanosta kohti sosiaalihuippukokousta. Menestystä Portugalille. Kiitos. Thank you. Uh, the floor now to Sari Rausio for one minute, please. Dear Mr. President, uh, arvoisa valtiosihteeri, Tervehdys myös täältä Hämeenlinnasta Suomesta. Lämpimät onnittelut puheenjohtajamaalle ja olen erityisen ilahtunut tuosta vahvasta innosta ja halusta nyt pistää vihdoinkin toimeksi. It's time to deliver, deliver 
ja se on todella tärkeää. Kannustan vielä erityisesti siihen, että kun tapaatte valtiopäämiesten kanssa, niin että myös valtiot pistävät toimeksi. Me kunnat ja kaupungit, alueet, olemme täällä jo valmiina. Ja, ja se on todella tärkeää, että koko ekosysteemi on viemässä tätä isoa muutosta eteenpäin. Tämä on meille eurooppalaisille muutoksen mahdollisuus. Kiitoksia ja kaikkia hyvää eteenpäin. Our colleague, Josef Berelli, please, for one minute. Thank you for the floor, Mr. President. Uh, Madam State Secretary, uh, I have a particular question about the ECI, the European Citizens Initiative. Yesterday, we had a very good debate about the ECI, and those who took part during this debate in the Committee of Region expressed their disappointment that the European Commission rejected almost all the valid uh, ECI initiatives uh, inside of the European Union. I was glad that uh, there was a very strong statement by the COR yesterday, by the press release. Allow me to quote one uh, sentence. Failing in giving due legislative follow-up to the ECIs by the European Commission not only frustrates millions of citizens, but also risks to create disaffection vis-a-vis -vis the European institutions. End of quoting. So, uh, Madam Secretary of State, uh, allow me to ask you that uh, what is uh, your opinion about the ECIs and what the Portugal presidency want to do that the ECIs could prevail inside of the European Union, valid ECIs, obviously, the European Citizens Initiative. Thank you very much for your answer. Thank you very much. I give the floor now to um, the Secretary um, of State of Portugal, uh, Madame Zakarias, for uh, her uh, final remarks. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President, and, and uh, thank you very much to all of you that expressed uh, such encouraging works, words uh, for uh, the Portuguese presidency. Um, some of you mentioned that we have a very ambitious agenda. This is the European Union agenda, and uh, we are just part of a marathon. So we will, we will do our utmost to deliver uh, during this uh, next uh, five months. And uh, we will continue to work with our Slovenian friends so that we together uh, make sure that uh, by the end of the year, we have all this uh, done and uh, that we can start a new cycle uh, in Europe. But um, in, our, in our agenda, I think now, as uh, I mentioned, uh, delivering right now means that we have to put the citizens at the centers, at the center of all these projects, at the center of European policies. This means that we have to put the regions, that we have to put the mayors, that we have to put the civil society at the center of what we are doing. And uh, this means three things. On the conference of the future of Europe, we cannot do this without getting to the citizens. And here we need to activate the national parliaments. We need to work with the mayors. We need to work with those that are uh, on the ground, that makes us uh, closer to the citizens. So this is very important that we ensure when we organize the Conference on the Future of Europe, that we count on all of you uh, so that we can uh, deliver this to the citizens. Then on the recovery plans, on the recovery plans and also on the implementation of the programs that come under the uh, current uh, new budget of the European Union, we also need to deliver and deliver on the ground with you. So I think it is all of you mentioned the relevance of uh, the regions and the municipalities in terms of the execution and the, on the formulation of the recovery plans. We believe this is very important and, and, uh, and it cannot be otherwise. Um, the regions and the municipalities need to be involved in the delivering of the recovery plans. And finally, the third area where it is of utmost importance that you are involved is on the delivering also in the social agenda, on implementation of the European pillar of social rights. 
And uh, most of you mentioned the, the enormous challenges that we are facing. We will lose thousands and thousands of jobs uh, because of the current crisis. So we need to focus on creating new jobs, new jobs in new areas of sustainability, of innovation, of technology, of the, on the social domain. And we need to have clear capacities for the creation of these new jobs. Skills are fundamental. Digital skills are fundamental. Some of you mentioned the huge digital gap that we have now. We have to close this gap. And this is important for kids that uh, are now uh, on, on home uh, learning uh, with uh, digital instruments, but also for older people that are so uh, dependent on these uh, new technologies and sometimes they're not available for them. So closing the digital gap, going for digital education, it's very, very relevant uh, here too. And finally, work together on our welfare systems. We need to work together so that we have in place this Union for Health. Uh, the program that the Commission just announced on cancer is fighting cancer is uh, fundamental. We need to continue all the work that we're doing on vaccination, but we also need to work on other areas like uh, um, protecting the most vulnerable, child guarantee, use guarantee. Uh, we need to close the gender gap. We need to uh, work on minimum uh, income, on minimum wages. So there are a whole lot of uh, areas where we need to, to work together and uh, where we need the Committee of Regions and all that are represented in this, uh, uh, in this uh, Committee of Regions uh, participate. So I really want to thank you all very much for uh, your encouraging work, uh, words, and we will continue this work together. Uh, I think the uh, uh, exploratory opinions that you are preparing will be very relevant for us uh, in terms of the implementation of the European Pillar of Social Rights from this local and regional perspective, and also uh, the other one on uh, maritime environment and the protection of uh, maritime environment. Uh, that is a very important element of our work uh, that needs to be done uh, in terms of um, in terms of uh, the uh, climate change and adapting to climate change and all that we need to do in terms of the climate deal. So uh, thank you very much to all. We will continue to work and I'm sure that the meeting that uh, Prime Minister Costa will have with you in May will be a relevant one and that we will continue to work together. Thank you very much, Mr. President, and thank you to all members um, that wished us Success. Let's go. <laughs> we need to work together. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Secretary Zakarias. Uh, I think we had a very, very interesting uh, debate on um, the Portuguese presidency and your priorities. Uh, I want you to know that uh, regions and cities across the EU and the Committee of the Regions, of course, which represents the one million regional and local leaders elected directly in Europe, will be at your side during your presidency and uh, of course we will be your best allies in an effort to bring uh, Europe closer to its people. Uh, thank you very much for your professionalism, your strong EU commitment and uh, uh, we will have a strong and reliable partnership throughout your presidency. So you can count on us and all the best for the difficult times you are having in Portugal uh, due to the coronavirus pandemic. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much again, uh, Secretary Zakarias.